Several protesters were arrested at tonight's congressional baseball game at Nats Park. This is a climate activist storming the congressional baseball game, and this is me interviewing the group just moments before. We've all seen it, vandalizing art, blocking traffic and transport, and hugging trees. These extreme groups use controversy to bring attention to their cause. We cannot afford new oil and gas. So some would call it climate activism, like this 12-year-old yelling at a podium. How dare you? But most have called it eco-terrorism. Eco-terrorism. Police may be assessing climate protesters for terrorism. And if I'm gonna be real with you, I agree. Because straight up, I think this is the dumbest f***ing way to get people on your side. But I wanted to put my bias aside and at least talk to this climate defiance group to understand where they're coming from. And to find out, are their methods leading to change or just pissing people off? Is that a good excuse to vandalize someone else's property? It's the more polarizing work that gets attention. How does racial justice relate with climate? I don't know, I'm not the best person in the group to ask about this. You're one of the leaders, come on. We found their website, infiltrated their movement, and after confirming the plans with their leader, I traveled to DC to ask them this. What are you guys protesting for and why? We are protesting the congressional baseball game. We don't think Congress should be allowed to play silly games when they are pretty much compliant with Ecoside. This baseball game is getting literally sponsored by Chevron, their massive oil company. I think one thing that's been viral recently has been like the climate activist group who like pour paint on like art or they like uh, chain themselves to like the ground. Do you think that's an effective way to get people on your side and change things? Um, so we don't vandalize or destroy property, but... So what do you think about their methods? Um, so that group is, I think you're talking about Just Stop Oil. They're in Europe. I think that their tactics are a really good way to send a message because why do we care about a Van Gogh painting when the world is quite literally on fire? So I am here with Vertical. That's a dope name. Like, I, I've, I've never met another vertical. That's my spiritual name. My real name is pronounced He L Chi. He L Chi Watts. What? Do you think like those extreme protests convert more people to want to change the environment? Or do you think it leads people to view you guys as contempt? We need people to go to the extreme like that. As we continue to reap the seeds of the, the environment, it'll begin to grow in people's minds. But in that instance, is that a good excuse to like vandalize someone else's property? Like for example, what if someone said the same thing of like, oh, we're gonna vandalize uh, your house because the planet is burning, so why would you care? If I was complicit in ecocide, I would expect people to be showing up at my house asking me to stop and taking drastic measures if I didn't stop. And we're talking about the planet we all have to live on. So you wouldn't be mad if, like, if someone just came to your house and just like started vandalizing it? I would be expecting it if I were playing a big role in the earth burning. Yeah. And what's funny is that just as we were editing this video, we saw the Stonehenge get absolutely violated by these Just Stop Oil activists. Like, what the f did the Stonehenge do to climate change? So this brings up a question about these activists. Because like I said before, if you think vandalizing property and making it so people can't go to work is the best way to get people on your side, then you're f***ing stupid. But regardless, let's continue to ramp up the questions and I'll do my best to remain unbiased and keep my cool. One of your guys', I guess, values is economic equality. But how would you address the fact that certain third world countries need to use fossil fuels to get to like a certain amount of like economic development? Maybe it's not a reality for certain countries to completely eliminate fossil fuels. Do you think you guys are coming back from like a privileged uh, position in that sense? I would pardon me one second. If we could like quickly get a look and see that, you know, these are our representatives. We, the people, are the government. You guys are just our representatives. But the thing is, what was the question? So the question is, how are you guys addressing economic equality if you guys want to get rid of fossil fuels? I believe that that's a question for the leader. Well, what do you think? I think that I won't comment on that. Only because I really don't have an answer. This is not about the oil drilling that's happening in third world countries. We're talking about mostly the drilling happening here, like in the Gulf Coast. Well, aren't that, isn't that being sold like throughout the, throughout the world though? Some of it is, but we're drilling an excess, more, a lot more than we need to be drilling. And we can also use, there's a lot of alternatives to 
fossil fuels at this point. Another value that you guys have is like racial justice. How does that relate with climate defiance? Well, I mean, as a progressive group, we believe all issues are aligned, kind of solidarity for everybody. I don't really have a comment when it comes to race. I'm a universal believer. I believe in all people. The planet is not just nature. It's not just the planet is the people too. Um, and so, like that act against um, like you know, like like racist uh, systems uh, sy sy systems of a uh, systemic racism. We want to maybe, maybe I'm not understanding, but again, how does that have to do with climate? I just I just want to understand yeah. you. Like fossil fuel infrastructure in general often affects people POC people in the. Probably, like in, for example, in the Gulf Coast, the people who live in that area are much lower income and are mostly all people of color. And those are the people who are getting cancer from the drilling site, living near the drilling sites. They can't afford to move away. As you'll see later on, did storming the field a few minutes after our conversation help them in their values and mission or was this all just noise? So clearly there's different opinions, whether you're a protester, an activist, an attender, or a creator like myself. And what I realized is that there's one thing in common, and it's that all of our data is being sold by data brokers. And so I recommend our sponsor Delete Me, not only for supporting this channel, but to help you stay private and protect your personal data, especially with the topic that we're talking about. Today, more than one third of Americans think that politically justified violence, doxing, or harassment is justified. And when these polarized individuals can find private information about you from data brokers, whether you're a student, climate activist, or a journalist like myself, anyone is at risk for simply having a different opinion. And so it's also important to protect yourself from identity theft and phishing scams. Here you can see the number of sites Delete Me has removed my data from, total pieces of personal information found, and all this helps in keeping my personal information stay personal. So get 20% off Delete Me's US consumer plans when you go to joindeleteme.com slash again or use promo code GEN at checkout. And now back to the video. So I got to know some of the climate activists, but now I was curious on the people watching, people on the other side and what they thought about the demonstrators. Yeah, I'm curious. I just want to get both sides of each issue. What do you think about what they're protesting? Um, I think fossil fuels are better for the environment than people realize because without them we would have cut all the trees down by now. I think they also saved the whales because before we were using fossil fuels, we are using whale oil to make everything. And I think people who wanted to save the whales should be happy that we use fossil fuels. Okay, interesting. So are you completely against like what they're supporting or do you think it's just not like a realistic outcome? Most of the climate change issue is about controlling our energy resources. Let's say they get off of fossil fuels and they put everybody on electricity and we're, we're all using electricity for everything. Well, all that has to be mined. Most of it's mined by slave labor in communist countries that are owned by dictators at very violent places. And I don't see why that's a better energy resource than fossil fuels. They make people money who take it out of the ground rather than being forced out of the ground. And there's a lot less exploitation involved in it, I think. Do you think climate change is like the most pressing like issue of our generation? Um, I think it, yeah, I think if it's, it should, I mean, it's here, it's now, we're in the climate crisis. It's a very pressing issue. I think it's one of them. I think they want climate change to be one of the most pressing issues, but I also think that the scientists who say climate change is real only get grant money if they say climate change is real. A lot of the scientists who uh, disagree with climate change, all their budgets are taken away and they're blacklisted. There's a big movement to change our energy resources, like I said, it, and, and if you change our energy resources, you, you change who controls the power in the world. Let me ask you this, so what do you guys accomplish with something like this? Has this actually led to any like policy changes? So a lot of people ask us like, why do climate activists like do this kind of polarizing work? Like, why do we do stuff that doesn't actually have an impact like on, like we're not into policy, we're not like doing lawmaking stuff, we're protesting, we're disrupting. And like, what's the point of that? You know, that's what people ask. Um, really, it's to get attention on the issue. Um, we have like a list of, I'm trying to remember them, sorry. Um, Just name me like one or so, like specific things that happen. We got a, we played a big role in the CP2 LNG export terminal being delayed. Um, we protested the people involved in voting on that and that oil terminal is currently delayed. Um, and we played, our group played a big part in getting that delayed, yeah. I would say today our success outside of the congressional baseball game is probably we're making 
we're starting an epidemic is what we're doing. We're reaching a tipping point. There's like over two, three, four thousand people here, so they know that someone cares about the environment. And as we continue to do more work and go down the road, down the struggle, I believe that we'll systematically spread the epidemic to where people start taking care of our environment a little bit better. So I'm curious, how do you like personally limit your impact on like the environment? Um, I'm vegan. I don't eat any for animal rights reasons and for environmental reasons because factory farming is a, has a massive, horrible environmental impact on the planet. How about like taking flights? Do you not take flights or? I do take flights. I try to limit to only flights that like I absolutely need, feel like I need to take. But I guess it's hard to be like completely off of everything. Yeah. I mean, it's great to try to reduce your footprint, but I think probably the easiest, yeah, again, the easiest thing you can do is go vegan, um, and then you contribute a lot less to greenhouse gas emissions, especially. Okay, at this point, I'm sure you're not the only ones wondering, like, what the hell happened to these dudes after they stormed the field? So I looked into it, and turns out, not much. As they call it, the Baseball Blockade 8 were arrested and imprisoned for 24 hours. And a few days later, one of the people that were arrested, Lauren, she listed out this long email where she described their conditions. She said that she was given cups of water that cockroaches crawled into immediately, and that even though her parents found out and were pissed, to her it was worth it because she says that the disruption worked with the Baseball 8 making national headlines and earning millions upon millions of impressions on Twitter. And in a follow-up email, they shared a donation link where they asked people for money to cover their legal fees as they'll be returning to court in just a few months for another trial as they may potentially be charged with invasion of federal property. So what's also ironic about this whole thing is that actually this baseball game was sponsored by Chevron, the gas company. And as a result of this charity game, they apparently raised $3 million in charity while climate defiance raised $13,000 for legal fees. I mean, so to be fair, how effective donations are to charity is a whole different topic and video for maybe a future time. But now I wanted to challenge them further, right? On whether their mission is even achievable. Because the reality is for some countries, fossil fuels is, is needed. And it's not just a reality to just, oh, I'm gonna start using solar panels and wind turbines now. When for a lot of third world countries, they literally depend on these fossil fuels to depend their current level of stability and economic growth. And so I wanted to ask them, wouldn't ending fossil fuels directly go against their values of racial justice and economic equality? Would you still want like an entire world ban on fossil fuels if it means certain countries may not be able to use energy at all? That's a good question. I actually, I don't know. I'm not the best person in the group to ask about this. You're one of the leaders. Come on. <laughs> um, what do you think? Like in that instance, like would that lead to more economic equality or racial justice? If we banned all yeah. fossil fuels. And certain countries won't be able to use it. If we ban new oil drilling projects, I think that would be fine. It's completely unrealistic. If we got rid of fossil fuels, everybody would have to start chopping wood down to heat their homes. If we got rid of fossil fuels, what would we use to make our products with? Again, plastic isn't bad for the environment. People think plastic's bad for the environment. They force us all to change the paper bags now. We're cutting down millions of trees for those paper bags. Millions of trees. That can't be better for the environment. What's better for the environment? Not having a forest anymore or having a couple plastic bags in the forest? We will not be able to eliminate all fossil fuels immediately. And our, I believe our group's um, vision is ending fossil fuels within 10 years. I believe that's our view. And that's a more kind of hopeful, optimistic view. I'm not sure if that's exactly going to happen. The point is to make the transition from fossil fuels to green energy as fast as possible. Well, I don't know exactly what the organization believes because I, has, I haven't read the bylaws or the constitution yet, but I do know that nobody will probably want to completely do away with fossil fuels. I think we have a great topic that we could actually work with Congress to resolve. If you are coming here to protest, how have you not read like the bylaws or know completely what's going on with the organization? This organization I just happened to discover today because of their cause, the environment, I feel passionate about the environment. I decided to join them today and I gave them my information. I look forward to getting some emails from them to figure out what these guys are all about. But 
I'm pretty confident that it's good stuff. So maybe the middle ground in all this is that we do need those people that are gonna push for progress, but also those that are gonna serve as a check to maintain balance in society. Because when the push for progress starts becoming more about who makes the most noise and you can get the same level of validation for posting a black square and putting some emojis and links in your bio, it's no wonder that those who are actually doing shit isn't being seen. And to be honest, bro, it especially hit me when I saw this tweet. This is Boyan Slot, and he's the CEO of Ocean Cleanup. And he leads a nonprofit that makes technologies with a goal to get rid of 90% of the world's ocean plastic. And the thing is, is that it's working. He's already removed 10 million kilograms of plastic from oceans and rivers. And as someone who genuinely loves the ocean, and also, come on, bro, I'm Japanese. Of course I love fish mostly eating. To me, in real all seriousness, he's the real climate activist. But with all that said, is it fair to group these protesters that I met as the same as the most extremist of groups like Just Stop Oil? Because even though I disagree with a lot of what they said, there is a clear difference between vandalizing property and protesting with signs. For you guys, it seems like policy is an important way to change things. Are you guys looking to vote for like a certain president in order to make that happen? Yeah, we don't decide as a group who we're going to vote for, but it's it's by individuals. People have different perspectives. Is there like a political party that cares more about climate rather than like the other side? Even the Democrats are not prioritizing what they said they were going to be like when Biden is running his campaign. He's not prioritizing climate in the way that he said he was going to. He pretty much lied. Because at the end of the day, am I any better when just like them I'm in the business of attention and just like them I understand how controversy brings clicks and views I mean look at how I package this video but then again at least I'm not out here violating the stone hedge no! but hey I'll at least talk to them and give them a chance so if you don't know me or you just started watching I'm on a mission to build the next big middle ground media company and one way I'm doing that is building my free weekly newsletter where we cut through the news and noise and give you that one big story that you need to know about and you can follow me on IG to see me build this mission and Twitter if you want to hear more of my real opinions. And if you like videos where I'm challenging people at protest, then I think you'll like this video too.